Welcome to the third episode of Basic Chemistry Explained, Atomic Bonds. Today we are going to talk about three types of bonds, ionic, polar covalent and non-polar covalent. First of all, here's a quick summary of valence electrons. Valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost shell of the atom. All atoms want their outer shells to be filled because that's what makes them more stable. If an atom's outer shell is not filled, it will either lose or gain the appropriate amount of electrons. For example, if an atom has two valence electrons, it will lose them so its second most outer shell which is filled will become its new outermost shell. And in this case, the atom has one valence electron, it will lose it to have eight. And here is a case where the atom has seven, so it will gain one to have eight. Here is an atom with one, and it will lose it to have two, as the lowest energy level, innermost shell, is filled with just two. And in the last example, we have seven and gain one. If you look at the eighth world wonder, the one and only, your majesty, the great periodic table of pure chemical elements, you will see that hydrogen and helium desire to have two valence electrons while most atoms want eight. We will ignore transition metals, actinides and lanthanides for just now. I will go much deeper into the valence electrons topic in another video. Let's take a quick look at a couple elements in particular. Nitrogen has five valence electrons naturally and wants to gain three to fill. Helium is just fine with itself and has no self-esteem issues at all and doesn't need any other electron to complete it. Barium is 56 and this is where he loses two electrons to be filled. Okay, let's look at one of them blocks up close. Do you remember the symbols for the elements? Well, that's going to come in handy when dealing with diagrams, pictures and later chemical formulas. Let's look at an ionic bond, say table salt and ACL. Sodium Na has one valence electron and wants to lose it while chlorine Cl has seven valence and needs one more to be filled. Na will give Cl its unwanted valence electron and Cl will gladly accept it. Now since Na has lost an electron, it has more positive particles than negative ones on the inside so it is positively charged. It is what we call a cation. Cl has gained a negatively charged particle and is now negatively charged, what we refer to as an anion. Since opposite charges attract and these two atoms are oppositely charged, they will stay close, bury together, and what we call an ionic bond. Now we will examine a nonpolar covalent bond, carbon dioxide CO2. Each oxygen O has six valence and carbon has C. Four. They all want eight, so now they get to move around their electrons to ensure that they all have filled outer shells. In this kind of bond, atoms share their valence electrons. They will share as many as needed to fill their highest energy level, outermost shell. After fiddling around, we can see that carbon and share four valence electrons with each oxygen atom. Now, if we want to redraw this representation of the bond, which is called a loose dot diagram. We will replace each pair of electrons with a line, so we will have two lines between each, oxygen and carbon, which indicates what we have we call a double bond. A double bond is when two pairs of electrons are shared, and likewise a triple bond occurs when three pairs of electrons are shared and a single bond when only one pair is shared. Now for a polar covalent bond we have water H2O. Here an oxygen is bonding with two hydrogens. We go through a similar process as we did with the nonpolar bond and end up with an appropriate arrangement of electrons. What is the difference from the nonpolar bond is that here the two atoms have very different electronegativities, which I will explain in another video further. What basically happens is that oxygen O is much bigger and stronger than hydrogen H, so we will have the shared electrons spend more time with oxygen O. So this is called uneven sharing of valence electrons and refers to a polar bond. 
I will also explain in a much later video as to why I drew the water molecule this shape. Don't worry about it for now. Okay, here's a quick summary chart of all this information. And here are some important points to keep in mind. Positive ions are called cations because cats are nice and make us feel positive emotions. Anions make us cry like onions and crying is a negative emotion. H and HE, hydrogen and helium, want two valence electrons. Most atoms like H to be stable. Big atoms like O and F and Cl, oxygen, fluorine and chlorine, only hydrogen because he's small and tiny. At last, these shall be introduced to chemical formulas. As you might know if you have been paying attention to this video or life in general, water is dihydrogen monoxide, H2O. It consists of two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen for H and O. The tiny two is an indicator of two hydrogens, and if we add a large two in front, we indicate two molecules of water. Likewise, sodium chloride is salt and consists of sodium and a chlorine atom. For an ACL. Now for the very last thing I will show y'all is a brief introduction to chemical equations. The most important thing to keep in mind, just like in math and physics class, is that the two sides of the equation equal. Duh. You do not want to write uh, 3 plus 4 equals 2 plus 2, obviously. Here's an example equation for how we make water. We need hydrogen and oxygen for that and we get dihydrogen monoxide. Now this equation is completely wrong for two unacceptable reasons. First of all, you must be Jesus since you have managed to create matter by making an H appear. Secondly, H and O are never found by themselves in nature as individual atoms, so they must be parts of other molecules. For this equation, we will use diatomic hydrogen and diatomic oxygen. Now if you can count, I hope you can, you will agree with me that you have successfully destroyed matter, you demon. Now we need to add a big 2 in front of the water to account for the amount of oxygen initially and a big 2 in front of hydrogen to account for the final amount of hydrogen atoms. Congratulations, you have balanced the most easy to balance equation in all of chemistry. No, you did not get a Nobel Prize just yet, but hold on to that hope, rookie. That's it, I'm leaving y'all guys to ponder your existence. Have fun in chemistry class. Look this to the phone with care And no way to leave the ship And this